Okay, welcome back. Um, Prince, if you're there, would you like to share your question, please, before we move forward? Prince? Uh, not a question, ma'am, actually. Huh. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, like uh, regarding your asking about uh, how what you have observed and all so mm. i thought of telling one more uh, regarding it okay like when sri radha she was is the counselor and uh, most of the things that she asked even though she is asking question i feel like you know that it's more like questioning me but no understanding that thing just want to share that okay so what what um so this is not about Sri Radha, uh, not about her, but I'm just, we're looking at basically skills, right? So what in the questions that the counselor put forth uh, didn't make you feel that there was understanding? What in it? Uh, what? Uh, so it's, it's basically to learn the skill, right? So and that's why I want you to uh, look at that. So what was it that the counselor said or the way they said it that helped you feel you were understood? Prince? Yes, yes, ma'am. You heard my question? So, uh, ma'am, can you once tell it again? Can so I said, it? yeah. what was in the question that helped you uh, feel? Wait, ma'am, ma uh, sorry for the disturbance. Can you once okay. your question, please? Yeah, so I said, what in the question, the way the counselor asked you, helped you to feel understood? Uh, like I have said before, the tone in the voice, like, okay, just not like, uh, I just not felt like just a question asking to get an answer, but I felt like, you know, something really want to help me or really want to know what's happening with me. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So I think what, what you probably, so just taking up that question, uh, Sri Radha ask, asked, uh, okay, so, so tell me what is going on. So maybe what you're saying is that the counselor were at that time was not able to see that you were, you were going through something, but more than understanding where you were at, the counselor kind of wanted to just know what is wrong. Right. And, and you're saying that in itself felt like it was just a question and there was no understanding behind it. Exactly. Just want to know uh, what happened, but okay. nothing more than that. Yeah. OK, well, great. OK, so this this helps you see the skill that is needed or or how you can establish that skill in order to make a feel or make a person feel comfortable through that entire process. OK, good. All right. Uh, see, students, unless and until you try it yourselves, you wouldn't know how to uh, how to begin. So that's why I'm asking you all to come up forward for the role play. Don't worry. I, I don't expect any, uh, you know, any great, uh, uh, you know, you should be the greatest counselor. That it, this is a learning experience. And it helps you to, um, you know, when you're attempting, and maybe when I help you with that, you begin to understand that, okay, it can be done this way also. So please come forward. And because all about counseling is a practice, you know, you have to practice the skill. So when I ask for volunteers, you should be, if, if you want to learn, you should be the first one to be here. Okay. So, um, so just, just a word on that. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, I have put the, the video link on the stream as well as for the e-learning students so you can have a look it's a 30 minute video but there are different sections of it so there may be only some sections that we're learning up until now that may make sense to you the other sections as we go you know you can keep watching it over and over again so the link is put up on your uh, on the stream okay so let's move forward OK, now, so we spoke about attending by the three non-verbally and verbally. The next we're going to do is attending by listening. So listening, 
uh, now it, it it may seem a very simple thing for us to do because you know everybody listens right okay so uh, listening is that ability to attend to what your counselee is saying all right now if you actually sometimes when you do the exercise and um, maybe when you are talking to each other when uh, when you are talking and you don't find someone paying attention to you giving you eye contact you feel they may not be listening right so uh, it helps to understand that when you're listening you you're not just using your ears but you're using your entire body you're using your eyes you're using uh, your hands you're using the way that you sit to actually bring comfort and listen uh, and also when you're listening um, ideally it should not be that you are um thinking of the next thing to say right when you're when when you're talking to your counselee you should not be in that place where you are okay what's the next question i should ask or is this the right thing to do what is what is this so you you need to be there completely listening without without paying attention to what you should say or um you know how am i sounding or what is you know uh, moving away from that point so attending by listening is something that is that's extremely important now what is the purpose of listening actively when you listen actively what does it demonstrate so first and foremost it demonstrates to the counselee that you are there that uh, you are paying complete attention and you are in a place of understanding attempting to understand what they are saying now for example um in the last one prince said mm, there's no problem with me i do uh, you know uh, i don't know why i'm here right now they're saying something right but if you've really listened uh you you are able to sense that there is something wrong so so when he said i like to be lonely so i said do you enjoy do you uh, i think i asked do you enjoy being lonely he said yes i want to embrace my loneliness all right so you're just not listening to the content but you're also listening to the confusing content because he's saying he wants to embrace loneliness and uh, his parents have brought him here and he's saying he's okay right so there is a sound confusion that you are able to pick up through the entire process not just with the client over here but maybe even with his parents so you are able to pick up that there's something confusing going on and that's what you're attempting to do your listening should clarify content that is confusing so it should confuse you that vijay uh, that uh, sorry that uh, prince came uh, uh, prince came to the counseling session actually saying there's no problem but his parents have bought it right so that is should be confusion number 1 secondly that he says there's no problem i like to be on my own i want to embrace my loneliness that can be a second confusion or a second problem right so when you're listening carefully um you you will begin to find clarify things for yourself okay now when you are listening when you do listen you're also going to be highlighting some things more conscious uh, concisely like for example i said uh, a prince uh, when you uh, i asked i said what would you like what kind of help would you like to have or what would you like me to tell your parents when they come here so what did he say he highlighted it he says i want you to tell them to let me be right or to to just don't bother me so it highlights when i'm listening i've been able to highlight so i so when i say i would be saying so i hear that you don't uh, you know you would you would like your parents to get off your back and you don't want them to bother you so i'm highlighting the same thing that Prince said, but maybe in other words, in something that is more 
descriptive, but I've spoken it in other words. Okay. Now, listening also helps out to check the accuracy of your understanding or your perception. Okay. Uh, uh, because your facts and your feelings sometimes may not match. Like in um, a Prince's case, there are certain facts that uh, the facts is that he's all right, there's nothing going wrong, but there's a feeling which is, uh, you know, ask my parents to just leave me alone. So that you see that some perceptions of yours, you're checking out certain perceptions of yours and checking it against what are the facts that you may have. So the purpose of listening is, uh, is not just to hear, but it helps you to clarify confusion. It helps you to highlight problems or issues that may really need a lot more care. And it helps to arrange or change your perceptions about the situation. OK? Now, what are the skills of active listening? There are certain skills. Now, some of this will come up again in the next week also. But these are important skills we need to learn, which is one is paraphrasing, clarification, reflecting feelings, and summarizing. And some of these are there in the video. Okay, So I please um, request you to go back to the video and have a look at how that is done. So in paraphrasing, what does paraphrasing mean? Paraphrasing is to express the meaning of what your counselee is saying. So your counselee may say many sentences. They may give you an entire story. Or they may say one huge paragraph about something. And paraphrasing is actually capturing the important points. right? They may, they may have said a lot of things, maybe related, maybe unrelated, maybe important, maybe unimportant details. But what you are doing is you are paraphrasing the entire thing. Now, for example, with what happened with the uh, prince, I can paraphrase it in one or two sentences and say, um, this young boy uh, uh, came in here quite uh, guarded in his, in, his, uh, uh, in his expressions. However, on a little bit of probing, he was able to express um, uh, that he wanted to be lonely. So I, whatever that happened in that 10 minutes, I paraphrased in two lines, right? So you get a basic essence of what is being said. And that's what even in counseling, when you're hearing a huge story, uh, you're listening. It shows, it tells your counselee that you're listening when you're able to, summar, to, to paraphrase. Summarize is a very different thing, sorry. To paraphrase it into one or two lines or uh, you know, smaller paragraph to help them know that I was listening. Right? It's it's just it's just for them to know that I was paying attention through that 10 minutes or 15 minutes that I've talked to them and I'm paraphrasing it. I'm, I'm saying that, you know, giving a small gist of it. And it's very important and to to do that because it helps the counselee see that you are interested. Now paraphrasing is really restating in different words. You can use maybe one or two, uh, a couple of words that the Counselee has finished, uh, has said, but largely it is reinstating, restating it in different words. Okay. Now, how is it done? Paraphrasing is done, like I said, by restating ideas or facts, by rewording the message that the counselee has put. It's not parroting or repeating. You're not saying exactly what they said. Okay. You're, uh, it, it's just to help your counselee know hey, my counselor is at is uh, gives me attention and likes to hear me, right? So that's what it's meant to be. So your how is it done? It's also used with fewer words without changing the entire bigger meaning, right? Your that's that's uh, that's important for you to understand that you don't change the meaning of the uh, uh, the, the description of what the person is trying to say. Okay, I've just put a couple of examples here. OK, here the counselor is saying, I don't know about her. One moment, she's really friendly. And the next time I see her, she's totally cold. So the counselor says, you haven't experienced her being very consistent. 
okay? Or every moment there is something new to do, there must be 10 different things on at the same time. There are a lot of activities for you to choose from. Or the third example, he's really crummy. His degree is from a non-accredited school. He had very little training and he has a poor relationship with his wife. So the counselor is saying, you don't think he's very competent. So it is it, you are choosing um, some words to really explain or to shorten what your counselor has, uh, what your counselor has said. OK, we'll do one or two practices, and I'd like you to write it down on the chat, OK? How will you paraphrase? Okay, it's it's basically this uh, the description that's there. How will you paraphrase? So this person say, saying, I'm completely worn out. It's twice as difficult for me to get around now with physical difficulty. And my family thinks I'm feeling sorry for myself. Okay, so what is a line that you would write to paraphrase this? Yeah. Okay, you can put it up on the chat quickly. Yes, come on. If you want to unmute, you can unmute and say it also. How will you paraphrase this? It doesn't have to be long sentences. Yes? Nobody? Yes, Nina. Go ahead. Nina John. Nina, you're on mute if you're speaking. Can you hear me now? Yeah, can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm finding it difficult. Uh, to move around, but my family thinks I'm making excuses. Okay, so you, uh, when when you as a counselor is paraphrasing, you'd say you. Oh, this is to... sorry, sorry. I thought it was a counselor. Sorry, maybe yeah. I didn't get that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, this is a uh, the council of paraphrasing it. Is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, but but that was a good one. That's that's a good thing that you said. Just that you'll have to change the I to you because the counselor is talking to the. Uh, counseling. Very good. Excellent. Okay, let's try just uh, Jackin. Okay, Jackin's written. So what I understand is that your family thinks you're wallowing in self-pity while you are actually tired of getting things done. Okay. All right. Good. Good, Jackin. That's that's excellent. Very good. Okay, let's try. Let's try a few more. Sorry, my one minute. This is gone. Just a minute. Okay. Um, OK, let's try this. I have had it with my son and had to bring his lying to my husband. I don't feel all alone dealing with the issue now. OK, how would you paraphrase this? How would you paraphrase this? Okay, Anthony said, I'm completely overwhelmed by my situation. I think it is for the. Okay, so you're saying you seem to be completely overwhelmed with your situation. That's that's good, Anthony. Um, yeah, Nina. So I'm I'm asking you, how would you respond? How would you paraphrase and respond? So here's the next example. Somebody try that. I have had it with my son and had to bring it to his uh, bring his lying to my husband. 
I don't feel all alone dealing with the issue now. What would you, what, how would you paraphrase it? Yes, Prince, go ahead. So, on the point, there are, can you hear me? Mm, not very clearly. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. I'll tell you if I'm not able to hear you. Go ahead. So, the way I think, uh, uh, paraphrase is uh, So, are you saying your tired of dealing with your son alone that you want to bring it, bring an issue to your husband? Okay, didn't hear that very clearly. Would you, would you put it down on the chat? Uh, okay. So, so, Anthony, you've said I think maybe I think you should. You may say you think you should have some difficult conversations with your son. You you feel you should have. You and your husband could have difficult conversations with your son. OK, that's good. That's good. OK, all right. Now, when you look at paraphrasing, uh, just to share about how can you, what your introductory phrase is, how can you begin to paraphrase? You can use any of these sentences. So what I hear you saying is, it sounds like you. If I understand you correctly, this is what you said. You're telling me that, you know, so all of this are beginning phrases of paraphrasing. So when you begin to use this, it helps you to kind of summarize it. These are just suggestions okay, of how you can uh, begin to paraphrase your, uh, your question. Okay. So the next skill in listening, uh, in act, attend, listening is to reflect feelings. Now, we spoke about this. We've been speaking about this earlier. Uh, reflecting feelings, it's much like paraphrasing, except that you're you're saying what the what you think the counselee is feeling. You're saying what the counselee is feeling. So, what does it show the client that you not only have heard what is being factually said, but also the emotions and the feelings that come behind it? So you're just not restating the the content of what your client what your counselee has said but you have added in a certain feeling right like for example i think someone said it is um, mm. you know you feel a sense of uh, uh, your your family you, you feel upset or you feel uh, angry that your family thinks that there is that you're doing this out of self pity so there is a there is a sense of feeling that's coming you feel angry because you feel your family is working at this through self pity. So reflecting feelings, it's all about restating just the words of the content that's being said, as well as adding to the feelings. Now let's just look at a quick example. Okay, my ex-wife phoned me yesterday. She told me that our daughter is very ill after a car accident. I'm feeling very scared for her. They live in the Middle East. So I'm going to have to travel to see her. And now I have made I have been made redundant. I don't know how can I afford to go. So here's the counselor actually um, uh, actually uh, reflecting with feelings. So you have had some bad news about your little girl who's been involved in an accident. You're frightened for her. That's a feeling. And also have worries, again, a feeling, over money. Now you have lost your job. So that's what the counselor said. So then the counselee says, yes, yes, that's right. So notice that the counselor did not offer advice or start talking how long he and his wife have been separated. In this case, they've been separated, but is reflecting the emotion of what is said, which was frightened. They were, uh, he or she was, I mean, he was frightened about the situation. Okay, so that, that's about reflecting feelings. Okay, so quickly, let's practice one, one or two. The counselee says, so many things are going on right now. Another hectic semester has started. My dog's sick and my mom's ill too. I find myself running around trying to take care of everything. I'm not sure I can take it anymore. So how can you reflect feelings over here? So remember, reflect feelings is both 
the feeling as well as the um, uh, as well as the general content. Okay, so some someone someone like to try. Okay, some thoughts. Uh, okay, this is the earlier one. All right, anyone? Come on. So, of saying the sorry, uh, Prince can't hear you at all. Huh? Okay, Prince, not able to hear you, Prince. Okay, so you can say something like you seem to be very overwhelmed by all the things that you are going on right now with your dog being sick and your uh, mother being ill. So I've added you seemed overwhelmed or you seem to be pushed to a corner, anything by the things that are going on right now. Okay, so it's just helping to reflect feelings. That's how they know that you are listening as well. Okay, uh, next one. Um, sorry, I think. Yeah, okay. The next skill in as you're listening, attending by listening, is what we call clarification. Now, in clarification, what you're doing is you are clarifying what you're hearing or you think you've heard, and you want to clarify whether it is right or wrong. So you ask those questions to clarify. And this shows genuineness on your part because it you're actually showing interest in what your counselee has to say. All right. And so they may be saying so many things and you've heard something, but you're not pushing it aside as if you know it doesn't matter, but you are seeking clarity with it. Now you have to be careful when you use the skill. It shouldn't interrupt the flow of what your counselee is saying. But in a large part, you can actually do it very, very gently, saying that, uh, oh, would you wait a minute? You know, this is what I heard you saying, but I didn't understand that. What, what, what does that mean? And then as I finish, you can say, OK, so carrying on from where you stopped, you said this. What happened after that? So you know, you have to, you, you may have to be able to, when you're breaking the flow, and asking for a clarity, you may also need to bring them back to that story to help them to continue on that. Now, praises that you use for clarification is, you can start like this. I'm not quite sure I understand what you're saying, or I don't feel clear about what the main issue is here. When you said dash, what did you mean? Or could you repeat something? So these are all phrases that you can use for clarification. Okay. The last one, so we looked at Paraphrasing, we looked at reflecting with feelings, we looked at clarification, and this is the fourth one. This is summarizing. Now, summarizing is they're telling you a large story and you're putting things to get, putting it in key themes, right? You're picking up information from here and there and placing the large information that's given to you in smaller parts. So here, the counselor puts together all the key themes, the feelings, the issues the counselee has presented. And, and this comes from maybe through sessions. You must have taken two, three sessions, and you've gathered those things and put them all together. So that's what summarizing means. Why is it necessary to summarize? Because of sometimes the counselee may be just saying very many, many, many lengthy things. Sometimes they can tell you very you know, lengthy stories with, with details that are not necessary, right? And that becomes very confusing and becomes extremely lengthy. So when you're summarizing, you are sifting away unrelated details and only keeping that which is important and related. And also, you begin to focus on that. You're helping the client also to focus on what is important so that they can provide direction to the, to the conversation. And you help them move from one place to another. So summarizing. Like they may be telling you about one part of their lives, 
And so you say, okay, I understood about this. Would you like to start and tell me about the other area of your life? Okay, we'll just, uh, okay, we won't go through this. So here's an example. The counselor is a young girl. At the beginning of the session, she says, I don't understand why my parents can't live together anymore. I'm not blaming anybody, but it just feels very confusing to me. She says in a low, soft voice with lowered, moist eyes. In the middle of the session, she says, I wish they could keep it together. I guess I feel like they can't because they fight about me so much. Maybe I'm the reason they don't want to live together anymore. All right. And so the counselor is saying here, earlier today, you indicated you didn't feel like blaming anyone for what's happening to your parents. Now I'm sensing that you are feeling like you are responsible for their breakup. So do you see that uh, in these sessions, the counselor picked up something from the earlier and from the current one and bringing it together and presenting a certain summary about the situation. OK, now phrases for summarizing, uh, you know, you, these can be anything that you can use. These are the key ideas you have expressed. Today, we discussed these following issues. Based on your discussion, we agreed that, dash, dash, remember, you should, what I have to say so far is. So these are ways in which you show that you're coming to a summary of, of this entire thing. OK, now I just want to bring about some uh, thoughts about what are some of the barriers uh, to listening, and why, why don't we attempt to listen uh, in completion? So some of the barriers that you would see uh, in listening is first and foremost is um, uh, let me skip my slide. Give me a minute. Okay, is daydreaming? That is when you are thinking about something else. Your counselor is talking, but you're thinking about your own experience, right? Uh, or you, you're you're saying, okay, oh, this is the same thing that's happened to the counselor has also happened to me in the past. Or you're thinking about this, what is happening here has also happened to somebody else. Or you're thinking about um, uh, something very different while the while the person saw. Maybe you're thinking about what you have to make for dinner, or you're going for a movie and you're wondering how you'll go for the movie. Or you are rehearsing. You're thinking about what you want to say back. Or you are filtering, you're listening only to the parts that are uh, important or parts that not important, parts that may be interesting and, uh, you know, holding on to that. Or you may be judging. That is, you've stopped listening because you have already labeled the person. Maybe they've said something sensitive and you've already stopped listening because you have labeled them as a certain way. Or it could also be just your ignorance and prejudice you know maybe something that you've said is something that you didn't like and so you have a bias against them so all of this tends to become barriers to listening okay the last part of it is attending by observation now observation is where you play you pay very close attention to the behavior of your counselor and a lot of this is observing them and their body language. It's generally the nonverbal behavior that they show. Because often you can find uh, to see if there are any discrepancies in what you are seeing and how they are behaving. Okay, So attending by observation becomes a very important um, part. Now, I have possible interpretations of some nonverbal expressions. Now, remember, it doesn't always mean it. it these would be the meanings. But in general, you're saying, in general, these are how these expressions bring about some meanings. OK? Like, for example, a direct eye contact, the possible meaning is that they're very attentive. If they lack an eye contact, it may mean that they are withdrawn. If there is, uh, if they're looking away from you, it could mean that they are avoiding, or they may be very preoccupied. If they are staring, it, it could mean that they're very uptight. If they're blinking their eyes, you know, frequently, they may, you may see that they have anxiety. If they've got a squinted or a wrinkled brow, it could mean that they are angry or they are annoyed. Or if they have dilated pupils, you know, their eyes are always looking very alert, it may look as if they're very alarmed or interested. So 
I mean, I have a couple of these slides, but I think it's important just to know that facial expressions, right? When you have a flushed face, when your face is red, it means you may be embarrassed or you are feeling anxious. If your eyes are wide uh, opened and your mouth is also wide open, it means surprise, you know? you. I'm sure this is not very difficult because all of you are the emoji age and you'll have a lot of this in your emoji, so you know what what it is, but it's important to see this in real life also, to see the way that uh, counselees may express this, okay? Furrowed bro, that is, you know, this, it is furrowed and with a tight mouth means like this, you're thinking deeply, right? Or it could be an irritation or an annoyance, or, uh, you know, if you don't like what your therapist is saying or your counsel counselor is saying, you know, you may have that kind of an expression, all right? Next one is shoulders and arms. Uh, I'm just going to look at a few. So when you have shrugging shoulders, this it's like, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's an indifference, right? Slouch shoulders would mean sadness or being withdrawn. The arms that are folded like this in front of you shows that it's a very closed uh, um, nature. They don't want to come into contact with anyone. When they gesture openly, it may mean a lot more openness. Okay, and if there is, if the arm and all are very stiff and it's in one end, it can look as if there's anger or anxiety. Legs, interpretation of legs, whether they're crossing or uncrossing, it can show anxiety or nervousness or a sense of protection that, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with you, just leave me alone. Okay, foot tapping, you know, or foot uh, or uh, shaking. There, there are people who keep shaking their their feet could mean boredom, foot tapping could mean anxiety, or any kind of controlled stiff movements could mean the uh, not wanting to really uh, uh, relate, have a sense of uh, close contact, okay? Then a body, body movement, when you lean forward, you show interest. When you're leaning backward, you show a sense of re uh, either a rejection or a relaxation. When you turn to the side, you know, maybe to the side like that when someone's talking, it shows avoidance. Um, when there may be a rocking or repetitive emotion, it could be anxiety or any kind of habitual uh, movements could mean a focused uh, attention, uh, uh, focused in attention, focused in attention. Okay. Now, what do you what do you observe? You observe the way your counselee is attending back to you. Okay, because it helps to see. Um, a lot more of details, the way your counselee attends, the way they may appear in the counselling session, all right? You also observe nonverbal, um, uh, uh, what, what they are doing. So you're noticing discrepancies in the way that they say something and the way that they respond. Like, for example, the client says marriage is the best thing that happened to them, but then also says that her husband is unsupportive. So, you know, it doesn't make any sense. She's saying it's the best thing happened, but also that the husband is unsupported. Verbal is you also observe the words or phrases that they use repeatedly. Like if a, a counselee says repeatedly, I wish things were better without them giving you any information, it, it really suggests that there is something probably, uh, probably wrong, right? So. Uh, it's important to know what you are observing and how you observe that, okay? When you observe, what are you doing? You're gaining uh, an indication of the counselee and what they may be feeling. One, you're observing them and what they may be feeling. And you're also, while you're observing, you know how effective your words are when you observe their facial expressions. And so when you're able to observe that, you can also do something to change maybe your questions or change the way that you also respond. Now, for, to please remember that we all attend. We, even now, you're you all are all attending to uh, as you're talking to people, as you're doing things. But learning to intentionally attend comes only by observing and actually practicing it yourself. So this is not a skill that can be learned theoretically or by just listening to a class, it's something that you may need to do on a practical basis. That is, you know, like look at people around, observe what they're saying, observe what they're doing, how they say certain things, and then, you know, practice it. Practice 
your skills of uh, clarification, practice reflecting feeling, practice summarizing, practice paraphrasing, practice all that, and how you can attend so that your your ability to reach out to people becomes much better. OK? All right. OK. Now it's open for questions if, uh, if you all have any. Yes, open for questions. So uh, this is about uh, not being judgmental or being prejudiced. So suppose by the way they sit or the way they think, we something gets into our mind, but they are not actually those people. Like hmm. by, just by observing them, so uh, doesn't it uh, shift our thinking? Like we might get carried away, right? Or we should be, we might be thinking something else. Like we should tell them for that and this for that. Hmm. So. In so the is it right for us to make any judgment in the first instance or wait and then? Not at all. Not at all. See, because like, for example, I, I told you, right, uh, when you're observing behavior, it could also be culturally very set. Like, for example, in the way people sit, hmm. right? And maybe when they're sitting cross-legged and maybe having both their hands together, it hmm. it also can just mean that they are they're comfortable in that like but then what you're judging is or not judging what you're checking or clarifying is whether in the way that they talk to you are they being open or are they being closed okay. right it gives you uh, when you observe uh, body language it gives you um, um, what do you say an opening to understand better right oh. now like for example maybe a person has got closed legs and closed hands and you're saying you may be talking about certain issue and they are just beating around the bush and then it confirms to you that they are actually closed right because one they're not giving you the details and also their body language experience shows it so then you know you can you can say you know i observe that maybe we're not talking about the issue the central issue in hand i sense that there is some sense of a discomfort for you to talk about it is that right so you are clarifying OK, so then they may say, uh, yeah, I'm, maybe I'm not ready to talk about it right now. I may need a one or two sessions before I can actually open up that part of my life to you. So you know that they're actually closed. Correct. correct right? Yeah. And then, so then you know, OK, they need some more time. And then you say, it's perfectly all right. You know, we can talk about something that you're comfortable with. What are you comfortable with? So he may say, I'm comfortable with A, B, C, D. And then you may slowly see that he is, uh, you know, he's relaxing his body as well then you know that there is a certain issue that is that is causing a sense of discomfort so your your uh, body language observation does not become uh, inductive it's not an induct induction it, it it's not inferential right it's something that you're picking up to to really build on to to add on to your data and your understanding uh, so it's just for us to understand uh, that person's point of view from their what they think. So exactly. that's nothing exactly. for us. Yeah, nothing for us to to do. It's we are in a place. We should always be in a place of non-judgment. Uh -huh. But we we are doing this so that we understand where they are at, and we are able to kind of preempt something. So if I feel that he's uncomfortable because I see him sitting like that. Maybe I'll pick on that and say, you know, I sense you are uncomfortable, but is that so? Are you uncomfortable about anything? So then I have, he hasn't told me, but then I've sensed it just through the body language and I bring that up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If not, we'll close. Uh, please have a look at that video because it's it's a good video for you all to also understand how that works. So please, all the students, both online as well as e-learning, it's there on both uh, uh, both uh, uh, both courses, both sites. Okay, so please ensure that you see it. Okay, let's just close with a word of prayer. Thank you for your patience. I think you'll have been here long today. Let's let's just pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we look to you, God, for, for you to hone our skills, Lord, in the way that we attend to others. Open our eyes, open our ears, may we be more, um, uh, not so lost in ourselves, but Lord, be willing to look at others and see where they are at, not to make judgments or inferences, but really to draw people out from their conflicts, from their uh, problems, so that uh, so that we could be a blessing. Father, we I pray, God, that uh, you will open each faculty of ours, Lord, and we will really engage in understanding and doing things that really help towards bringing people out of their struggles. Thank you once again for this class. I bless each person in your name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, everybody. I'll meet you all next week. Thank you.